Great, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I know we have a full uh, hour for you all. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you're joining us from. A uh, warm welcome on behalf of the Boost community team to our Bright Spots webinar featuring the story, The 20 Year Road to Ending Cervical Cancer in China. Uh, before I hand it over to our wonderful presenters, um, I'd like to go over just a few housekeeping slides first. Uh, next slide. So we're using a Zoom meeting format today uh, so that we do ask that you remain muted to minimize any background noise. Uh, you can always use the chat box to submit questions, make a comment or respond to other participants. Uh, now would be a great time to introduce yourselves, uh, tell us your name and where you're joining us from in the chat box. Next slide. Uh, so for those who are, are joining for the first time, the Boost community is a, a diverse network of more than 2,200 immunization professionals from over 135 countries. Through our online platform, boostcommunity.org, we offer opportunities for our community to connect with peers, strengthen leadership and advocacy skills, and grow in their careers. Uh, just a note that we will be storing the session recording and slides in the resource library of the Boost Bright Spots Learning Group uh, so be sure to register for the uh, Boost Community account and join that learning group on the platform. Next slide. Um, for those who are new to the series, Bright Spots are stories that shine a light on the work that is happening on the ground and inspire immunization professionals to learn, adapt, and take action in their own communities. From engaging with religious leaders in the community to improving supply chain delivery to reach the last mile, uh, there's innovation occurring at all levels of the system. Uh, this third round of stories includes six stories from five countries, uh, including China, Nigeria, Zambia, India, and Bangladesh. Um, and these are stories occurring at the regional, district, or facility level. Um, the first set of these third round of stories is now live, and they can all be accessed on the Bright Spots microsite, which is Boost Community, or sorry, brightspots.boostcommunity.org. Um, through this live engagement series, Boost offers opportunities for our members to hear directly from our Bright Spot story submitters to better understand their challenges, our program, and how they achieved success. Uh, so with that uh, next slide, I'd like to introduce our speakers for the session. Um, first, we have Yulin uh, Chow, who's a professor and director of the Center for Global Health at the Chinese Academy of Medical Science, um, Peking uh, Union Medical College. As an expert in cancer prevention and control, he's been involved in many national and international projects to study um, etiology, primarily intervention, um, including HP, uh, HPV vaccines and early detection of a variety of cancers through multidisciplinary and global collaborations for promoting cancer prevention and co control programs in China and developing countries. We're also joined today uh, by his colleague, uh, Dr. Partha Basu, uh, Partha is presently the Deputy Head of um, Early Detection, Prevention, and Infections Branch at the International Agency for Research on Cancer, uh, the Specialized Cancer Agency of the World Health Organization. Um, Dr. Basu's uh, pioneering research in cervical cancer prevention includes evaluation of efficacy and safety of different HPV vaccines, uh, especially the evaluation of um, efficacy of a single dose of the HPV vaccine assessment of performance of cervical um, cancer screening. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to actually hand it off to Dr. Uh, uh, Partha, uh, who's gonna be sharing uh, some slides um, and we'll open the presentation. So over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Liz. Let me share my screen. Hope you can uh, see my presentation. Yes, we can. Yes. Mm. Great, thank you. Uh, uh, first, uh, at the outset, I thank the organizers of the webinar for giving me the opportunity and a warm welcome to all the participants to this particular webinar, which is focusing on cervical cancer, a disease which has divided the entire world into two. On one hand, we have the countries having adequate resources to implement population-based cervical cancer screening program, have very robust HPV vaccination program, having 
very low incidence of cervical cancer. So for example, Northern America, European countries, uh, where the, the, the incidence of cervical cancer is below 10 per 100,000. On the other hand, if we concentrate on the, the lower you know, half of the globe, there we see the sub-Saharan African countries, Latin American countries, including countries like India, so many of the Asian countries having very high incidence of cervical cancer. A highly populous country like China is unique just because of the large population burden we have a major share of the global burden in in china as you can see out of the 100000 new cervical cases happening every year uh, nearly 18% of them they are in china this is the graph that is again showing the huge inequality in the mortality from the disease in fact, 90% of all cervical cancer deaths are in the low and middle income countries. And again, if we look at uh, the total numbers, the total number of uh, deaths happening every year is more than 300,000. And again, 17% of these countries uh, of these deaths are shared by China. So the highly populous countries like India, China, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Nigeria, these are the countries they need to improve their cervical cancer prevention programs to, uh, to, to, to change this global scenario. And as you know, that uh, the, in uh, 2020, uh, the, uh, the World Health Assembly has taken almost an unanimous decision that every country will work towards elimination of cervical cancer, which indicates that the incidence of cervical cancer in each of the countries in the world should be below four per 100,000 women. And that is not just a wishful thinking. It is possible. It is possible because we have excellent tools. We have a very effective and safe vaccine against HPV. So if we can uh, ensure that 90% of the adolescent girls are vaccinated against HPV. Again, we have cervical cancer screening and treatment of the cervical precancer lesions that can prevent this disease. So we need to ensure that 70% of the women, at least between 35 and 45 years of age, they're screened with a high performance test, which at the present moment is HPV detection test. And what is most important is that we take care of the women who are tested positive on screening test. But then, Again, in terms of implementation of vaccination, we have a huge global inequality. In fact, only 58% of the countries around the world, they have been able to introduce the vaccine in their national immunization program. Uh, but then uh, 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 among those countries that are, have not been, been able to introduce the vaccine, most of our, the, them are having very high burden of cervical cancer. So we'll have to make sure that these countries uh, uh, have an affordable vaccine that uh, they can in, uh, introduce in their national immunization for program. Finally, there is enough evidence to say that screening works. As you can see here in the in, within Europe, the countries that have well-organized population-based screening, they have been able to uh, reduce the incidence of cervical cancer over the years. But even within Europe, there is a lot of inequality. Europe is not at all a heterogeneous region. So there are many countries that have not been able to introduce the population-based screening program, and they're still seeing a rising trend of cervical cancer. And this takes me to the situation in China. Again, China being a large country, there is a lot of internal uh, heterogeneity. There are places where excellent work has been done to introduce a, a, a screening. And then the, they have uh, the, 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 the population-based cancer registries. They have shown reduction in cervical cancer, but there are many places where that uh, advantage has not been, uh, been given to the women uh, in living there. And 
today's uh, webinar will be essentially be uh, you know uh, addressed by professor yulin chao my great friend and i consider him as one of the greatest uh, researchers who has contributed immensely to our understanding of cervical cancer elimination through through vaccination and through screening so over to you yulin thank you thank you Haza. <laughs> Okay, can I share can I share my screen? Um yes, you should be able to. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I start? Yes, go for it. Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to participate in this Bright Spots webinar and share my experience and in virtual. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Pasa Basu for his global perspective of cervical cancer and this webinar moderator, Elizabeth Coway of Sabi Institute for her nice introduction. <clears throat> my story, is about the 20 years journey to ending cervical cancers in China. The first part of my presentation includes why is me, then why pick up the topic of cervical cancer in China as well as introduction of game changing vaccine. I received a medical diploma from Sichuan Medical College in Chengdu, and a master's degree in the medicine and from Dalian Medical College, China. 40 years ago, my first job was in the Kunming Institute of Medical Biology, Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences, where Sabin OPV introduced from Soviet Union by Dr. Gu in 1959. It really was quite a coincidence. Before I returned back to China in 1997, I had been trained for 11 years at the Johns Hopkins University School of Hygiene and Public Health and the Cancer Prevention Studies Branch and the National Cancer Institute, National Institute of Health in the United States. I like a lot what Albert Sabin said, a scientist who is also the human being cannot rest, while your knowledge, which may be used to reduce the suffering, rests on the shelf. So I translate, translate it into the Chinese. That is, uh, that is says, Dang Ke Yung Ku, the Zis B Suzu Gao Gers, Sun is the Nid Kajija, Sabun and Shows. Sorry. And this slide shows and the cervical cancer burden in China. In year 2020, WHO IARC and the Global Cancer Data Report, there will be 4.57 million new cancer cases and 3 million cancer deaths in China. Just has started, as Pasa Basu said, because the population you know, in China is so big, so we have the bigger and the disease incidence and, and also the deaths. There were 110,000 new cervical cancer cases and 6,000 deaths, accounting for more than 17% of the deaths by cervical cancer globally. In 2009, initiated by the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Finance, and the All China Women's Federation, the cervical cancer and the breast cancer screening project is provided for rural women aged 35 to 64 nationwide for free. So after 10 years, the screening program integrate into the national basic public health service for both rural and the urban women in China. However, the demand 
of cervical cancer screening and the programs severely exceed health service supply and leaving large part of the population uncovered. In 2006, the arrival of HPV vaccine delivered a breakthrough in the prevention of cervical cancer. While the green light for use of vaccine was given in many Western countries, but in China, the process of clinical trials, which has required by China FDA, had just begun. It was a huge milestone, but one that had to be tempered by patients. From 2008 to 2019, clinical registration trials for local vaccine, Inovax, Cycling, alongside GSK's Cervix and MSD's guard cells, took place in China and under the auspices of the our team and the Chinese Kingdom of Medical Sciences, local CDCs, and the other hospitals. In 2016, the long-awaited breakthrough finally arrived, and the China FDA provided the clearance for the vaccines used amongst Chinese women. The approval of HPV vaccine was a watershed moment for our team. However, the journey had, had only just begun. Two additional factors now bottlenecked the promotion of HPV vaccines in China. Limit, limited vaccine supplies and the lack of the awareness on the importance of HPV vaccine, immunization, among adolescents and girls, the state funded the national immunization program did not cover an HPV vaccine, which meant vaccine supplies often favorite urban, wealthy, and working age women. And the expenses of teenager girls and those living in the lower resource and settings. And meanwhile, lack of the public awareness and acceptance of vaccines in general. And the HPV vaccine in particular complicated the rollout. Parents often feared that the vaccine would potentially be harmful to their children's health and would encourage their children to engage in the pre-marital and sex. As a result, the HPV vaccine rates for adolescent girls remain under 1% in China. We strongly felt that there was still work to be done in the continuing journal journey to prevent cervical cancer. In 2019, the quest brought me into the orbit of Dr. Duan's Qianzi, a gynecologist and from Junger Banner, a county under the administration of Ordo City in rural Inner Mongolia. It held, it held the side distinctions over the cervical cancer incidence rate three times the national average. Fortunately, the cervical cancer HPV screening program has been conducted very well and for ages 35 to 64 years old women since 2016 in our dos. Dr. Duan is well known and highly regarded figures in the country. Her passion for working in the women's health in underserved areas stemmed and from her mother's education in the countryside. This is a short video quoted from an interview of China 
global television network. Jungar Bana is a small town under the city of Ordos in North China. It is also the first place in the country to offer HPV vaccination to girls for free. Wait, you visit the doctor from Beijing, Duan Xianzhi. Duan, a veteran gynecologist, is a key figure behind the massive launch of free HPV vaccination and screening in Zhongar, and then orders as a whole. Without her and her friend Chao Youlin, a cancer epidemiologist at Peking Union Medical College Hospital, the Zhongar miracle wouldn't have happened, and the program wouldn't have quickly expanded to other cities. Okay. For our team, the opportunity to make a difference could not have been greater. And together with Dr. Duan, we began brainstorming around the HPV vaccine pilot for teenager girls in the county. Having deal with patients facing the end of life due to cervical cancer on a regular basis, Dr. Duan needed no convincing and led me to Ms. Zhang Yinying, a vice magistrate in Junger Banner. We partnered with other stakeholders to successfully negotiate a highly discounted price for vaccine. Later, the trails of us working with other officials and the women's leaders to design a pilot to be rolled out to the county's 9,892 eligible adolescent girls. By early 2020, the team was ready to launch the pilot. However, COVID-19 brought everything to a halt. Resources for health and the county and the city level were all redeployed towards addressing the challenges of the pandemic. For six months, non-COVID-19 related care was no longer a priority. And the schools, which were meant to be the kickoff point for the health education portion of the pilot, were now closed. The team was disappointed, but like everyone else, we are focused on the navigating life under the pandemic. During this difficult period, we persisted working closely with the local leaders to overcome these challenges. We first strengthened our collaboration with local women leaders, including Dr. Duan and Mrs. Zhang. Their deep network in the local community meant that the project could gather the resources and the support necessary for the campaign rollout. In May 2020, we submit the proposal of national immunization programs for HPV vaccine provision and for adolescent girls during the Chinese People's Political Consultative Congress and the National People's Congress. And this proposal attracted explosive coverage by national media outlets, gained more than 680 million 
social media views and raised public awareness on HPV vaccines. In preparation of the formal vaccine rollout, we develop educational and promotional and materials, and including immunization handbooks, frequent asked questions, and HPV infection and vaccinations target towards adolescent girls, healthcare workers, parents, and school teachers. And meanwhile, the, the technical guides and for community health workers, official and, and the teachers become the important tool to mobilize demand among school age girls and their parents and to advocate no funds and from the Banner People's Congress. The support of local women leaders and the focus gathered by national media brought the pilot prog programs back on track. Multiple sectoral collaboration of, uh, of health-related units, including Health Commission, the local CDCs, and Educational and Sports Bureau, and Publicity Department, etc. Rules around the engagement had eased by mid year 2020 in China. And on August 1st, 2020, the free HPV vaccine program finally kicked off in the community clinics. Influential national media widely reported the event has the key steps in the EPI introduction of HPV vaccine in China. Media reports strengthen the confidence of the government citywide vaccine introduction in Ordo City. The mobilization effort and the provision the worthwhile has demand began to creep up in the earliest. <coughs> By November 10, 2020, over 84% of the eligible young girls aged 13 to 18 in Dungar Banner had been part partially vaccinated. Vaccine rates rose and from less than 1% in July to 84% by November 30th. Public appreciation of vaccination increased in the pandemic year. As countries race to find the vaccine for COVID-19, relevant media in China promoted the vaccine, which combated vaccine hesitancy among the public. For many people, the idea that they could prevent the future death with the known vaccine, because especially real, which in terms drove the demand for the HPV vaccine. Concurrently, young teenagers started sharing their vaccine status for the free on the Weibo, one of the China's largest social media and platforms. Soon the free vaccination program was trending. As the program has progressed, the vaccination awareness of young girls has increased remarkably. Comprehensive prevention and control measures for several cancer in our doors will achieve the WHO year 2030 targets of 90, 70, and the 90s. That is seven years ahead of schedule by end of 2023. It was significant steps for our teams who had been advocating for inclusion of the HV vaccine in the national immunization and the programs without success. And by year and 2021, the program's runaway success in all those cities drew keen interest from other cities or prefectures in the country. And the team was invited to share the story behind their implementation in Ordos. In September 2021, the National Health Commission 
launched a new round of cervical cancer elimination initiatives, which include HPV vaccine rollout in 15 cities as part of the Health China 2030 national strategy. Today, the city of Xi'an, Jilan, and Chengdu, Xiamen, Wuxi, Shenzhen, the entire province of the Guangdong, Hainan, and Fujian, with total 44 cities, have already committed to providing the free HPV vaccine to 13 to 14 years old school, church, school girls. Mm -hmm. The Ordo City Pioneer Project proved to be the per perfect storm, storm of the opportunities and building of the statistics that conveys that cervical cancer has real threat and finding the right champions in Dr. Duan and seasoning the insights and brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic and for the researchers and who's dedicated and brought into the place the resources and to tackle the problem and the bird's eye view to bring the result to national attention. In a photo contest organized by WHO commemor commemorating the first anniversary of the cervical cancer elimination day of action. So this photo taken just after a group of all those city girls received the free HPV vaccines, won the top prize and was selected as the scene of the event worldwide. The Ordos Pioneer Project was showcased for all nations around the world fighting the standing fastly against the cervical cancer. The eliminating cervical cancer in global still has a long way to go. Let's join hands to create the better society without cervical cancer. So my time is out. I stop here and happy to take questions if any. Thank you for your participation. That's it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Yulin, for that fantastic presentation. Um, I think MJ noted in the chat box, but if you do have questions, feel free to enter them into the chat box. Um, we can also unmute some folks. So if you want to raise your hand and ask your question that way as well, um, you're definitely invited uh, to do that too. Um, we did receive a question um, from Dr. Sikander um, who noted that HPV is not a required uh, vaccine in the national schedule in Pakistan. Um, and he was, I guess, curious why this is not mandatory. And maybe you can go into a little bit more detail about maybe the challenges um, that you had uh, getting it approved uh, at the national scale in China. The, because the WHO only can give a recommendation, so they cannot do the mandatory. They have to be ad adapted by the every single countries. And even for China, so we are not a mandatory for HV vaccine. Okay, but we still and put the HV vaccine has the signature and second class the vaccine. Only put in the first class vaccine, that is a mandatory vaccine and free to every people, eligible girls and okay. Great. Perfect. Um, so while we're waiting for other questions. Um, maybe if you could go into a little bit more detail just uh, around the future of this program. You mentioned expanding to other cities. Um, I guess what is currently in the works? Uh, what, you, what are you planning now? Uh, that's right. <clears throat> because they, uh, uh, even our uh, country has no national immunization programs for HPV vaccine. But now the, the experience learned from the outdoors. So that is a local government and they initiate the immunization program. So then uh, last year, and then uh, under the, you know, uh, the, the National Health Commission, and they initiated the health city and uh, the programs, and then they and then invite and the people to apply, so over 15 cities applied. But at the end, because the same province from the Guangdong and Fujian and Hainan, so the, the whole province to join the program, 
So they and they give us like the total 44 cities. So now they are going to and promote the regional, you know, and the, and the district and the vaccination programs. Mm. Wow, that's very impressive, and it just goes to show starting at a small scale can can ramp up very quickly. Uh, so congratulations uh, on your efforts there. Um, still waiting on maybe a few more questions. Again, feel free to enter them into the chat box, um, or uh, you can raise your hand as well. Um, I guess maybe another question from my end. I know that you pointed out a number of lessons learned um, along the way. I guess, was there maybe one thing that was surprising along your journey or what was like most uh, surprising to you, whether it was uh, a challenge or a success along the way? And that's right. Because our ultimate goal is to implement the national immunization program, right? So this is our ultimate goal. But we have to do and step by step. So this is why so I went to the, you know, where doors, that's a small, and, uh, uh, you know, counties and then the local health professionals and then the vice, you know, and, 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 and the governors and the interesting and to also and, and uh, agree to initiate the local immunization program. So that is the, there, we, we, we from the one small place and now move to the whole country. So I think that's the one. And the second one is because of the elimination of cerebral cancer is not just for vaccination. So we have to, you know, to do the vaccination plus and the and the screening, just as and your daughter and Pasa and said. So we have to combine these two together and also and we treat the all all of the diagnosis patient. Then we will really and reach the elimination of cerebral cancer and and bring the you know incidence to four per hundred thousand. Great. And so far. Uh, Dr. Partha, were you going to also add something as well? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you so much, Yulin, for this uh, very nice presentation, all, and also uh, showing that how the small efforts can pay dividends, and gradually they can be expanded. Uh, as you know, the recent, uh, the, uh, the recently the WHO SAGE has come up with a recommendation that countries may go for single dose of HPV vaccine for uh, uh, girls between nine to 20 years of age. So what is your take uh, in terms of, you know, its acceptability within China, whether it is going to be uh, going to facilitate the introduction of the vaccine in some of the provinces that are not having adequate resources. So how, how will it uh, be uh, you know, uh, taken uh, by the policymakers, program managers in China? Okay, and in China, so everything we have to, and it depends on the our FDA. So the program manager have no right to change the role. Okay, but uh, but unfortunately, WHO said it has this recommendation. So I think Chinese FDA will and the series consider it, but we have to and follow our FDA regulation. The program manager cannot make a change. Mm. Mm. I think our major problem, you know, is. Uh, in the lower resource cities, right? It's not, it's not in the East Coast and the, and the, 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 the province and the cities and the, and the main, you know, and the efforts we need to and emphasize so on the, you know, the far West region. Great, thank you for that. and. I think I saw that we had a question from Tina. I don't know if she's still on or still had a question. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi, Tina. Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah, thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak. I actually thank the Yulin and the team for bringing up this uh, very important presentation. 
Uh, my concern is on uh, rural communities where women are very, very ignorant about this cervical cancer. And then they are also restricted by traditions not to speak. So how can the health workers be able to reach these women who are having these cervical issues that they refer them for treatment? How can we uh, really reach them? Because they are restricted by tradition not to interact uh, publicly, whether with the opposite, with the female or male gender, unless they seek permission from their husband. So this actually uh, can cause a lot of uh, challenges to really detect women who are having these issues, especially in rural communities where there are restrictions based on traditional beliefs and other norms. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Tina. And, uh, and so you raise very, you know, and the practical and the, 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 the Christians. And the, in China, because we are fortunate, we have the very organized societies. So in the every, every counties, there is the women children's hospital. There is also the village clinics. So that is the system. So if they, you know, and can provide the service to the people. The only things, and uh, we need to convince the women, this is good, you know, and the screening is good, vaccination is good, so they work participant. Mm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, well, I don't see any other questions coming in right now. Um, I do wanna remind everyone that uh, Yulin's story is available on um, the Bright Spots website, uh, brightspots.boostcommunity.org. Um, and just wanted to go over maybe a few next steps now. Um, so thank you again, Yulin and Dr. Partha for um, wonderful presentations. Um, we definitely appreciate your time. Um, I know that you're in the Boost community as well, so we can always answer additional questions offline as well. Um, okay. Thanks, MJ. Um, so yeah, just a few reminders. Yes, great. Um, just a few reminders to uh, join um, the Boost community, so boostcommunity.org. Uh, it's free to make a member account. Uh, we have resources like our Bright Spots. So we now have over 20 Bright Spots available from um, over 10 countries um, on our platform. Uh, we also launched a Telegram channel last year um, for reminders about events like uh, this uh, webinar today, as well as others. Uh, we do have a Bright Spots learning group um, on, the Brights, uh, on the Boost Community platform where you can uh, engage our story submitters and ask any follow-up questions there. Um, and then we also have a survey for today's session. So if you wouldn't mind filling that out um, at the end, uh, we would really appreciate that. Um, and then uh, next slide, just wanted to make you aware of a couple uh, upcoming opportunities that we have. Um, this Friday, we're hosting an event as part of our global mass uh, vaccination site collaborative uh, staffing considerations for COVID-19 mass vaccination sites. Um, we do invite you uh, to join that event. Um, and then we just launched last week um, applications for a COVID-19 recovery for routine immunization programs fellowship. Um, this is in partnership uh, with the World Health Organization. Um, so that uh, fellowship will launch uh, in just a week or two. Uh, so we definitely encourage you to uh, learn more through the links that we're sharing in the chat um, and definitely apply if you um, think it would uh, benefit you and your colleagues. Um, with that, I do want to thank everyone for their participation today. Um, again, this, is, this webinar is part of our Bright Spot series, which we hope to offer more of in the next few months. Um, so definitely, again, check out all the resources. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns, you can always email us at info at Um So thanks again, Yulin and team, uh, for a wonderful presentation. We appreciate your time today. <laughs>